Let's uh, let's talk about Okada. Okada made his debut in Atlanta. Man, the the momentum that this company has for their hardcore audience, <laughs> man, to to come out and have Will Ospreay just put on a clinic, an unbelievable match of the year candidate. And then a couple hours later, Sting has his last match. And then a few days later, here comes Okada. Next week, we know it's Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, as we're going to know her. But before we talk about that, what do you think about the introduction of Okada? The Young Bucks come out as heels, of course. They're saying, and I love that they took credit for Sting's last match. That was awesome. And they fired Kenny Omega, who's been sidelined with diverticulitis. We don't know when he's coming back, but eventually he will. So I guess that's the end of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks being a heel trio. Instead, taking his place, Okada. Man, what a performer. Lots of rumor in any window about the type of contract it took to get him there. What do you think of his uh, first appearance as a member of the main roster here? for AEW. He looked good. Yes. Right? He dressed like a pro. I was impressed with that. You know, and I don't know enough about Okada to have too much of an opinion yet. I'm certainly looking forward because I've heard so much about him and, and, and praise in terms of his work and all that. But I'm, I'm just not familiar enough with him as a performer to, to comment too much. But in terms of the setup, in the way he was introduced, um, I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. And I talked about this a little bit on Strictly Business. Both Osprey and Okada, those are those are two big moments in that show. They got almost no buildup during the course of the show. And great, Osprey's here. Wow, he's part of the AW AEW roster. Wow, fuck. And he got 654,000 viewers. What the fuck? And I'm certainly not Will Osprey's fault. Nothing was done. Very little was done. Maybe nothing. Nothing that I can remember was done to build anticipation to that moment. You could have easily, with a series of 20 or 30 second bites from Will, let us hear from him. Let us let, let's hear what he wants to achieve here in AEW. Let's hear why he signed. Why is he now a part of the roster? What is he looking forward to? Who does he want to fight, wrestle, whatever? Let's hear from him. As we're getting ready to see him later on in the show, that's how you format a show. Knuckleheads. And it was nothing. He just popped up. Ah, Will Osprey's here. Great. 654,000 people watched it. That's ridiculous. The lack of format, the lack of understanding of how to produce television is Tony Khan's biggest flaw. He does not get it. I don't care how much of it he watched as a child. It doesn't matter. The fact that they both, now I kind of got a little bit more, right? But the fact that you've got a guy, you've spent as much money as you've spent on Will Osprey because whatever whatever reason you believe that that's the future of the industry. And I'm not even going to argue that it may be. Well, I'm just going to say, you on, made man. the show and you did nothing to build it up and build anticipation. You just put them on, put them on TV and expected it to work. I don't know. And, and here's, here's the part that, that frustrates me. If you go back and watch that show, there were backstage promos that served absolutely no function. It was filler, and they were horrible. They actually made your show, made the show, not your show, made the show look amateurish because they were so poorly produced and written and served no real purpose. Why? Did Why you like you anything gotta... about that motherfucker on Wednesday? Huh? Can you find anything you enjoyed on AEW Dynamite on Wednesday? Just one thing. I did enjoy watching Will Ospreay work. I enjoyed the hell out of his match. Who did he wrestle? Yeah. Kyle Fletcher. Okay. What's his name? Look at you. Again, another guy that, you know, I only know because he wrestled in that match, but I did watch that match and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I mean, it was a work of art. Will Ospreay is, 
he's otherworldly in terms of his abilities in the ring. And he's got character. He's got a presence. He's got a look. And he knows how to use it very, very effectively. In fact, I think the biggest challenge that AEW is going to have with Will Ospreay is because he's so far ahead of everybody else on the roster, not only in terms of what he's capable of doing in the ring, and maybe Okada's just as good or better, or maybe Kyle Fletcher's just as good or better. I'm not here to argue that. He's exceptional when it comes to what he's capable of doing in the ring. Better be careful how you use him, because there's not a lot of people that can keep up with him on that roster. There's not a lot of people in the country that can keep up with him. Probably not a lot of people in the world that can keep up with him. He's that fucking good. But it also means you have to be careful how you use him. Because if we're going to see Will Ospreay every week, you're going to get to a point after a couple months where he's wrestling guys who just can't keep up, and he's going to have to slow his game down. He's going to have to adjust to the talent he's working with. And you'll be taking away the very thing that makes him such a special performer. I would use him as a, an attraction. He, he, he'd be my Hulk Hogan when Hogan came to WCW. He'd be the Undertaker in WWE towards the end of Undertaker's career. I would be very judicious. How I, I would make him so special and make people so hungry to see him perform that he remains that attraction and, 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 and holds that value as opposed to what we saw with CM Punk when they brought CM Punk in. And he's wrestling people that didn't matter. And before long, CM Punk didn't matter when it came to ratings, when it came to the, the, the only thing that we can measure that's that's objective and not subjective is the numbers. Listen, and, I, I, I want to cut in right there because I totally yeah. agree with what you're saying. You know, to use a, a real estate term, like if we were doing an appraisal, which is something I do in my real life, uh, shout out to savewithconrad.com, skip your next two house payments, real time. Um, the highest and best use of punk was probably not wrestling guys who were a part of a tag team in a singles match in prime time. Maybe not the best use of him. I get that. And it did feel like there was a lot of 50, 50 where he was giving a lot to the guys. And I know he was trying to make guys, but I feel like when you go back and you look at the very beginning of AEW, maybe Cody and the Bucks were doing too much of that. They didn't position themselves enough like a star. And I wanted to see what you thought about, because I, for one, thought, and I listen, I know that Fletcher is a badass wrestler, and I know he's got a Ring of Honor title, and I know they have history, him and Osprey. But as someone who's just watching the show, maybe you don't know that because you tuned in because it was Sting's last match and Boy, you couldn't help but be impressed with Osprey. I didn't know if Fletcher was the right first opponent for him. And I didn't know if a six man tag with Okada on collision on Saturday night was the best use of Okada. I don't know that you saw that. It was a quick win. He he hit his finish and that was it. But I don't know. I was not too sure on is this the highest and best use for Okada and for Osprey? And we know that Osprey has a dance card now with uh with danielson at the dynasty pay-per-view april 21st in st louis i'm excited about that osprey and danielson are going to tear it up but okada what do you think about his debut and now a six-man tag on collision i didn't see the six-man tag obviously i was i was out <laughs> at a fundraiser um so i didn't see it i can't comment on it Again, I, I, you know, the, 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 the debut when they brought him in, I thought it was fine. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was, it was sufficient. I, I thought he looked great. Can't comment on what happened on collision, but again, just based on what you told me, absolutely not the right way to use him. That you, that's what, you know, I've used the word discipline a lot when I talk about creative discipline, story arcs and things yes. like that. Yes. Discipline applies here too. You've got two massive stars and there's so much potential in them. Be careful how you use them. Be careful how you expose them because before long, they're going to, if you're not careful, it's kind of like a reverse rub. You know, it's like if you're an up and coming talent and you get an opportunity to get involved in a program with, you know, a, a John Cena, a Steve Austin, a Ric Flair in his day, whomever, Undertaker, that's, boy, you're getting elevated. 
basically getting a raise right there on the spot because you get to work with somebody that's so over. And assuming they're going to work hard to get you over, that's the next big jump in your career. The reverse of that is taking somebody like Will Ospreay or Okada, assuming that he's in that same category, haven't seen him work, don't know, but taking someone like Will Ospreay, who I have seen work, and when he has to slow his game down or he starts working with people that don't really matter, they're not getting a rub from him. He's getting a rub from them and not the kind you want. Got to be really careful about that. We'll see. I, hopefully, hopefully Tony's listening to this or somebody that works with him that can get to him. And just be careful. Just because you have a new toy doesn't mean you need to play with it every single day. 